Hello everyone and welcome back to my Stardew Valley Min Max and 100% Perfection Guide. Today we will take on the first day of summer after putting in a lot of hard work in spring to be able to earn enough money for 640 starfruit seeds. Today we are going to buy and plant the seeds. On the second day we will do a little fishing and on the third day we will start our tree farm and make a return to Skull Cavern. If you haven't checked out my spring recap video, I highly recommend watching it to get a better idea of this run and check out my playlist as well with all the other days. With that, let's get started. So as you can see, there was a bit of debris on the farm that we had to clear, and there's also a bunch of weeds that we must scythe. So those are our dead parsnip plants that we planted on the last day of spring, which Sadly, we don't get any parsnips out of them, but that's alright, because what it does is it allows all of this farmland to stay hoed and watered. If we hadn't done this, much of the field would be not hoed, like the dirt would come back, and it wouldn't be watered. So this ta saves us tons of time, or else we would have to do this all manually on the first day of summer, which is pretty unrealistic to hoe and water all of this land. So the next thing we do is put down our deluxe speed grow, which we bought in spring. So we bought 640 of this. As you can see right here, we only have 480 plots of land, but we will attempt to expand to cover the whole 640. So as you can see here, I'm starting to hoe some more dirt and one more like little scarecrow setup will cover the whole 640 and eventually once we have a lot more money in the middle of summer we'll end up planting even more likely up to 800 starfruit or more you can see we have a few more quality sprinklers there which we'll be able to cover this new land of ours but first we're gonna head to Clint's pick up our iridium pickaxe which we brought to him on the 27th so now we can use that to clear more rocks on our field and mine in Skull Cavern a lot more efficiently. First, we're going to open our geodes. We have quite a few geodes to open. Again, I am using the geode predictor to open all of these. We're going to sell a bit more things because not only do we want all this money to buy starfruit seeds with, we want just like a little extra, like maybe 10,000 extra left over to buy some of the regular summer crops from Pierre's because... We do want to plant one of at least everything for the collection, and the community center bundles also require a lot of summer crops. So here we are. We have a bunch of old tools and weapons that we don't need. We're going to sell them to the Adventurers Guild, but as you can see, it doesn't open till 2 p.m., so we have to kill a little bit of time there. We're going to sell all of this stuff as we don't need it anymore. And we're also going to sell a bunch of our Void Essence and Solar Essence, since we don't really have too much of a use for it right now, we'll save a lot of it to craft into Mega Bombs, and just for any other reason we may need them. But they are worth quite a bit of gold, so we are going to sell a few of them. And with that, we warp to the desert, not for Skull Cavern, but for Sandy. We want to pay Sandy a visit and pick up our 640 starfruit seeds. Watch all of that money go down. Quickest way to burn through over 200,000 G. And there we are. We almost have the 640. I do have one extra starfruit seed that I got from the museum collection that I probably don't need, but it's okay to have an extra one. And we're back at the farm. We're probably going to make a stop at Pierre soon, but first let's organize our inventory just a little bit here. And now we'll head over to Pierre's. We pick up a quest real quick first, and then sell some of our random stuff, like the extra parsnip seeds that we don't need. We pick up pretty much one or two of everything, and then we're going to pick up a lot more melon seeds compared to the others 30 of them a bit overkill but what we need these for is the community center bundle the quality crops bundle 
Same thing with the corn. We need five gold star crops for these. So we want to buy quite a few seeds since we can't guarantee whether or not we get a gold quality. We also buy some extra peppers since Shane loves hot peppers. And Mayor Lewis does as well. And then a few more summer spangles since Caroline likes the summer spangles. And then everything else we just want for the collection. And just to have a couple of so we're going to buy... Like two of each, three of each maybe, and with that we're good. We're going to head back to the farm now. We're going to put a bunch of our items away and then get started with planting. So our main priority right now is just to plant the starfruit seeds. So we're going to start with planting the ones we have on the plots we have. If we have time at the end of the day, we might plant all of our other seeds, but we will likely spend a lot of time trying to get all these starfruit seeds in order, especially the new field over there to try to reach the whole 640. So we can always plant the other seeds tomorrow and they should be all right. Let's take a look at the crop planner I used for the month of summer. So starting on day one, you can see we planted our starfruit. And then if we plant them on that day, they'll grow on day 10. We have to plant them on that day to grow on day 19 and then plant them that day in order for them to grow on the 28th, the last day of summer. If we plant any starfruit on day two, then they'll grow one day late and it'll have a chain effect to the day 19 one, they'll grow on day 20, and then they will be pushed back and not grow on day 28 of summer. So this is why we have to plant all of our starfruit on the first day if we want to fit three harvests in. Otherwise, we'll only be able to fit two harvests and if we plant our starfruit too late, past day 19, then we will end up with a bunch of dead starfruit crops, which is a lot of wasted money. So now let's take another look at the planter with all the crops that grow back. So blueberries shouldn't be affected by planted on day 2. They could even be planted on day 3, and we'll still have maximum harvests. Same thing with corn. They'll grow into fall. We don't have to worry about that. Same thing with hot peppers. The hops, we will lose one harvest since they grow back every day, but we don't have to worry about that. The tomatoes would have been nice to plant today because we would have been able to fit in one extra harvest on the last day, but nonetheless, it is okay. These are all not as important crops as the star fruit, so we won't worry about them and just end up planting them tomorrow. And with that, we're finishing up planting a few more seeds, watering a few of them that didn't have a sprinkler yet. And we just nearly have planted 640, just a little bit shy. And we pass out, and we're on to day two. Today, we are going to do a bit of fishing and plant the rest of our summer seeds. We have a neutral luck day on our hands, which we're not too concerned about because we're doing quite a bit of fishing, and luck doesn't impact fishing too much other than the fish's movements so if we have better luck the fish will be less likely to move erratically and all over the place and with worse luck they will move faster and all over the place so neutral they should be about average we are going to be trying to catch the sturgeon from the mountain lake and the puffer fish they are some of the more difficult fish to catch but with our iridium rod we should be perfectly fine before we leave, we had to take care of a few things around the farm, the usuals, and we're going to head straight to the mountain lake. We're going to go to our normal fishing spot and fish until we get a sturgeon. Now, this one right away, it looks like it's a sturgeon already. You can see it is moving around quite a bit more than like a largemouth bass would. And it is a sturgeon. We get an ancient doll. Seems like a rare artifact. But we do get a bit lucky with a not so erratic sturgeon. We're going to keep fishing here because we also want to get a rainbow trout. That's something that we haven't caught yet that we could not catch in spring. So we're going to go for that here. They are not very difficult to catch and are pretty common. You see we got one right here. They are unique to summer. So we had to make sure to catch one in the month of summer. We still have the whole month, but we're kind of getting the fishing out of the way right here. And we have everything that I want from the mountain lake, but I still want to get just one more sturgeon so I can have one for a quest. Um, 
or one to give to Willy, or one to put in the a fish pond when we make those so that we can get caviar. Because sturgeons are the only fish that will produce caviar, which is a unique item that differs from fish row. So we will be needing that if we want to 100% every shipped item in the game. So I do want to catch just at least one more sturgeon and I should be content. Now sturgeons will only appear in the mountain lake during summer from I believe during the day. So like from the morning until around like 7 p.m. I don't think they appear at night. We did get another one right there. We're going to head towards the ocean now, talking to Demetrius and looking through the trash cans as we go along our way. And we're going to fish over by this rock over here because we can fish pretty much wherever and we'll still get the same quality now since we've got a really long rod. But anyway, we're here for some new fish, including the red mullet, the tilapia, and the tuna. The tuna is a little bit more difficult to catch than some of the other fish, but it should be no problem. They appear pretty commonly. All of these fish will appear during the day, during the summer. And the one fish that I'm a little bit worried about is the pufferfish. The pufferfish is pretty difficult to catch, one of the harder ones in the game, and will only appear during the summer, during sunny weather, and only appear between... 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. So you really only get a four hour window each day to catch the puffer fish. Right here, it looks like we have a tuna. Again, the tuna are not too hard to catch. They're a bit more erratic than some of the other fish. But we're really just gonna sit here until we get ourselves a puffer fish. And right off the bat, this one's moving a bit. And you can tell it's a puffer fish already. Right now, the only fish that'll move this much is the puffer fish. So, you can see I'm struggling quite a bit with it, even with level 10 fishing and the iridium rod. We're almost about to lose it, but we're just holding on for dear life and trying our best here. And it looks like we'll be able to get it. If you aren't as comfortable with fishing yet, I do recommend using a food item such as the dish of the sea or the seafoam pudding. But there we go, we catch the puffer fish, and we should be good with all the ocean fish we want right now. We're going to eat the spicy eel to continue moving fast, and we're going to grab that um, forageable right there, all the forageables we can find, we're going to grab. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a trip around the southern woods here to see if there's any more forageables. It's worth our time as we don't have too much more to do today. We are going to take a trip to the secret woods for the first time, which we can unlock now that we have the steel axe. The steel axe is required to chop down this stump right here. And these stumps are probably the quickest source of hardwood early on until you can start farming mahogany trees, which are actually new to this update. But now that the mahogany trees are in the game, they're much quicker of a way of getting hardwood than these stumps are. We're heading back to the farm and one more thing about those stumps is they're a pretty good source of foraging XP which is the main reason we're going to be farming them pretty much every day except for the days we go to Skull Cavern really early or have anything else going on but we'll be farming them pretty often in order to get foraging XP because the stumps do give a decent amount of foraging XP and foraging is one of the harder skills to level up. So we're going to grab all of our seeds right now and start planting them. We do have to hoe some dirt. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick here. We're probably just going to plant our seeds kind of wherever without much organization. Usually I like to be organized and honestly these basic sprinklers don't really allow for much organization. They're in a strict pattern and Kind of a weird sideways diagonal one at that, so it's a bit hard to work with. And as you can see, it was a bit hard to navigate and hoe all of the land with my gold hoe because of the orientation of the sprinklers. It's also a bit hard to go around in water like we are, but 
before I forget, we're going to water these starfruit plants right here that we had planted and didn't water. We had to water them manually. But now that we have the sprinklers down, we can water those. We also picked up that one sprinkler that was not being used. We'll end up placing that down and hauling some dirt around it to utilize. The only type of fertilizer we'll be using is speed grow on the melons since they take a while to grow. We'll utilize that for them. But for the other crops, it's not really necessary. Again, we just want like one of each and a lot of the other crops are the regrowables. So those will grow back, give us a few of them, and then some of the other ones we'll just get one of and be fine for the community center and just for shipping one of each. So we're not too concerned about that. We're going to try to water as much as we can here. It's okay if we don't get to all of them. It looks like we do manage to do most of them. And we're going to try to make it to bed for once, but we don't make it all the way to bed. That's all right. Tonight there will be the earthquake. So you can hear that. And we do level up level 5 foraging. Of course we're going to go for the gatherer for a chance at double forged items. Which will also, more importantly, lead to guaranteed iridium forageables at level 10. Which is essential. We have a super luck day, which is great. And you can see there was an earthquake during the night. So what that does is it opens up the northern woods by the spa so now we can finally start our tree farm up there now there was no reason to start our tree farm earlier during spring because it would have been a waste of our time min maxing but now in summer we do have to start getting materials for kegs so we're gonna start on that we're gonna head all the way up there and start planting our acorns so unlike fruit tree seeds which need two tiles in between them regular trees can be planted right next to each other and still grow but once they reach the sapling stage they will only grow into a full tree if they have one space unoccupied between them and whatever else so planting them in this fashion will guarantee we'll get a tree out of each of them and then we will put a tapper on them eventually we will make another tree farm which will be just used for gathering wood the trees here will be organized into rows where the seeds are next to one another. The seeds can simultaneously grow into saplings, and then the trees can grow with one space in between them. Once the tree is chopped down, it'll be quicker for another tree to grow since the one next to it is a sapling. That's the basic idea behind it. And right now, we're waiting for Pam. The classic method of standing in front of Pam's trailer that way she can't move and then her movement actually gets sped up so this was the quickest way to get to skull cavern prior to update 1.5 and same thing with standing right here so she'll get to the bus quicker than her normal time of 10 a.m you'll see she moves a lot faster than normal and she's almost here so this is a bit unnecessary because we have plenty of Omni Geodes that we can trade for um, desert warp totems, but we kind of just do it here for a little bit of nostalgia and for fun, because why not? Having that said, we will buy a lot of desert warp, warp totems right now and head on to Skull Cavern. I'll be skipping over a lot of the footage from now on in Skull Cavern, since we are pretty much doing the same thing as we have been in spring. We will be spending a bit more time farming other ores as well as iridium, and more time slaying monsters since we aren't in such a time crunch to gather iridium ore like we were in spring. We do have the iridium pickaxe now, so rocks will take just one hit to mine, although we will still mainly be using bombs to blow up the rocks. Once we get some more upgrades like using explosive ammo and a slingshot or the napalm ring, I'll be sure to show those off, but for now we'll skip over many of the floors. And we have done that just now. We've made it to floor 32. We've spent pretty much half of the day getting down here. Getting a good amount of loot. And this floor is a pretty good floor. You'll see a decent amount of gold ore. But mainly, look at all these mummies. Just I'm including this part right here just because it's so satisfying to just kill all of those mummies. And just blow all of them up. Just as so. Just look at that. I don't know about you guys, but that's just one of the 
more satisfying things for me in Stardew Valley, blowing up the mummies. So as you can see, we've made it down to floor 58. We spent a few more hours in the day. And you'll see shortly as we make our way down here, there'll be an interesting formation of gold. We've got a perfect 3x3 three three square of gold ore, which it's just always fun to see when there's um, larger formations of ores, and especially when they're in a perfect grid like this. So we get about 25 gold from that, not too bad. And we're going to head on down to the next floor, or skip over many floors actually. We're fast forwarded to 1250 AM, floor 69 now, where we've got a few iridium nodes and a few gold or I've noticed this run has been pretty lucrative on the gold end for me but not as much iridium ore but again that's all right we have been short on gold so it is nice to stock up on some gold ore as well as the others and it is still very worth it to use mega bombs and even regular bombs probably more so the mega bombs because we don't want to use all of our coal up right now, but we will use both regular bombs and mega bombs just because we want to use quite an even amount of gold and iron. We don't want to use like too much of one or the other, so we'll be using both of them. And we're making it towards the end of the day. We're going to see if we can't make a final push down. I am going to heal up because those bombs do... Um, add up some damage to me and you see using the hole also does a little bit of damage so I have to be careful in that regard if you are at minimum health and go down a hole it won't ever kill you holes can't ever kill you they'll just put you down to 1 HP at the very least so you don't have to worry about that so we're about to pass out that'll be the end of this day and the end of this video Next video, I will start including more days than usual, probably at least four or five in one, since we'll be doing a lot of Skull Cavern diving, which I'll skip through. If anything important or exciting happens, of course I'll include and cover that, but to make the videos nicer, I will be doing a lot of cutting and fast forwarding. We will start on a barn next time, so look forward to that, and if you're interested in seeing the next one, I do recommend subscribing. As always, feel free to leave a comment on what you liked or with suggestions, and thanks for watching.